If you're new here, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. I'm Jack. I kind of see depression as this like big well and I have been way at the bottom of that well where you look up and all you see is darkness and you see no hope, no way out and it just feels so impossible. That is such a hard place to be and if you're there, my heart just goes out to you. These are the tools that I use that kind of kind of allow me to stay in a place inside that well if I feel myself kind of falling into it where I can kind of still see up, but like look up and be like, okay, there's light. Maybe there's like a ladder and like I feel some hope that I can get myself out of it even if I don't feel my best at this exact moment. Just a quick little disclaimer. This is not a replacement for professional help. If you are experiencing life ending thoughts, please seek professional help. You deserve that. Take what feels supportive for you at the moment and leave the rest. Okay, number one is utilizing self-compassion, self-acceptance, and just like not being a big asshole to yourself when you're not feeling well because that is not going to help anyone or anything. Number two is a kind of a two-parter. So number one, being aware of my warning signs, like being aware of those things that signal like, hey bro, you're spiraling a little bit, like you're, we've been here before. Maybe I'm sleeping in really late, maybe I'm losing motivation, maybe Maybe the things that I usually love just feel just kind of like very dull. You know how it is, I assume. The second part of that that I think is also very important is to not create stories around what those signs and symptoms and experiences are. It is one thing to just acknowledge that and be like, hey, noticing this, observing this, noted. And it is another to take that and turn it into a bunch of what if scenarios. So what is maybe be you're tired, you're feeling unmotivated, you're feeling sad, fill in the blank. But what I find can really trigger going deeper into that well is then taking that and being like, oh no, this must mean that I'm depressed. Am I going to be depressed all week? Am I spiraling again? Like, is this going to be like last time? This must mean that on Friday, I'm not going to be able to do X, Y, and Z because I'm in a depression and now I'm going to let all of these people down and it's never going to get better. And that must mean I'm about to be depressed. And it can sometimes, and you can deal with that problem if it becomes a problem, but it might also just mean you're a human being and you're going to have bad moments, bad days, bad weeks, and even bad months sometimes. I want to encourage you to not bypass, not ignore the things that you're experiencing. In fact, to do quite the opposite, to heavily acknowledge and accept what is, meaning what you're experiencing in that moment, but to be mindful of turning that into a bigger story and narrative and kind of like future anxiety spiral about what it might mean if you're not feeling good in that moment. Number three is decision making and discernment. When I start heading down this path, I really try to feel into myself and ask myself, what are you needing right now? Sometimes that might be alone time. It might be recharging. It might be a weekend of binge watching Netflix and chilling out and having no expectations and taking everything off your plate. And other times it might be to take that really hard step of getting out of the house, of going to get some sunshine, of going to hang out with a friend, of going to get movement in, of checking something off your list. And that skill of kind of figuring that out gets developed over time. I think you can be really helpful here to make sure you're not engaging in shoulds that are imposed on you by society, family, other pressures. So if you're saying to yourself, like, I'm a better person if I clean my house, all of these things are morally neutral. With that said, when you're feeling not good, most things are going to probably feel sort of like a should. Like you're probably not going to want to do anything. You know what I mean? So even things that you know will make you feel better. So I kind of try to think like, is this a should that is aligned with my values? Is this a should that is aligned with what I truly think will make me feel better? When I find myself in this place and I'm really needing like an extra push. I'm currently unmedicated for everything. So I really like to lean on something called Magic Mind. This is Magic Mind. How cute is this 
packaging. I want to be totally transparent here. I receive free product for me sharing this with you. And I know that that can be like, oh, why are you doing that? Especially when we're talking about something so serious. I'm doing it because I promise you it is coming from a genuine place of this being something that has dramatically improved my mental health and has helped get me through some really, really hard lows. And I hope that it can also really help you. For me personally, it really helps fight brain fog. It just puts me in a better mood. Like it just feels like it gives me a little boost. It really helps like kickstart my motivation and just make things feel a little bit easier. If you're like me and really like why do things work, I'm gonna give you just a really quick explanation. It is a little shot and it's got L-theanine, which really helps with focus and attention and kind of like sustained energy. Lion's mane and cordyceps mushrooms, which also really boost clarity and focus. Ashwagandha and rhodiola, I think it's pronounced rosea, someone correct me if I'm wrong. That really helps with anxiety, which I need all the time. There are also nootropics, which help keep you focused amongst a bunch of other things and just overall amazing lovely wonderful ingredients if you are on other meds especially like an SSRI please consult with your doctor before trying magic mind but if it sounds like it would help give you a little boost you can use my code jack ADHD 20 for 20% off the link will be in the description box below feel free to ask me any questions obviously no pressure to buy but I highly recommend it if it sounds like it's a good fit for you. Number four, kind of in the same vein, but if you find that maybe you are kind of in one of those more like frozen isolation kind of places where you're just like very blah and what you identify is like, even though I really don't want to, I know it would make me feel better if I checked something off my to-do list, if I did pick up a little bit around the house, if I did make a social plan. We want to lean on something called behavioral activation, which is really sort of this idea idea that action precedes motivation. So not waiting for motivation to hit for you to then take the action, but rather knowing that the action is what will then create the motivation. So it feels a little bit like just do it, which I know can be really triggering and annoying, but it's sort of like really leaning into your future self. I like thinking of like, how can I best love my future self? Okay, number five. I think we're on number five. Does anyone know? <laughs> anyway, do your very best to tend to basic self-care needs, which trust me, I know is very, very hard to do when you're feeling bad. But I always really try to prioritize sleep, especially because I know that my mental health declines drastically if I'm not getting enough sleep, which for me is eight plus hours. Try to make sure that you're eating remember that like i know people give a lot of like eat nutritious food like yes obviously that's great but like please just eat anything like if you're feeling depressed and you're struggling to eat like anything is better than nothing like eat whatever you feel like you can get down and then i also try to make sure that i'm having enough water again i know these things are so hard in the moment but i find that just staying hydrated can really help also with some of that brain fog and low energy and just kind of make me feel a little bit better. Also, plug for trying to get yourself into the shower if you can. If that's feeling really impossible, you know, try to find some little hacks or workarounds. I want to recommend a book. This is not like an affiliate thing. This is just a book that I'm obsessed with called How to Keep House While Drowning. It is about like keeping up with your house when you're feeling depressed or when you've got anxiety or ADHD or all of these things are just really busy. But it's also just about adulting in general. It's super shameful free, very much about all of these self-care tasks and home care tasks being morally neutral, kind of coming up with workarounds that work for you. It was life changing for me. I listened to the audiobook. So if the self-care, like basic kind of tasks feel really challenging, that would be a really good thing to check out. Next is movement. I'm annoying. I know. It's the last thing I want to be told too. So you can just fast forward if you're like, bro, no, I won't be offended. But what I will say is that for my body personally and my brain, 
movement is probably the number one thing that helps me feel better. I know that's not accessible to everyone, but for me, especially like cardio, which I do in the form of dance, um, but really any type of movement just boosts my mood so drastically that it's one of those things that even if I don't want to do it, I kind of like force myself into a little bit because it's data has shown that it's like 95% of the time it is going to make me feel significantly better. Remember, any movement is better than no movement. If you're like, I absolutely am not going to go to dance class. I'm absolutely not going to go outside for a walk. I'm absolutely not going to go to the gym. Can you like go like this? Can you get up and do a few jumping jacks? Can you literally lay down like the depressed blob that you are and stick your legs up in the air and move them around a little bit? Anything is better than nothing. So if you feel like you can kind of push that out, I highly, highly recommend. I do have a video I'm just remembering how to work out when you really don't feel like it. I'm gonna link that uh, here. I think that could be helpful if this piece is challenging for you. The next thing, notice I've stopped counting because I just can't keep up. <laughs> the next thing that I try to really do if I start feeling myself heading down that darker path is to be extra mindful of my media intake. For me, that means really decreasing the amount of media that is anxiety inducing for me, whether that's news, whether that's social media accounts that make me feel like I'm not good enough or that I should be doing more. I try to really decrease that and I try to increase the types of media that make me feel good, whether that's feeling validated, knowing that I'm not alone, or whether those are podcasts or audiobooks or YouTube videos that maybe give you motivation and inspiration to do things that feel good for you. Or things that are comforting, like comfort shows. We love a good comfort show comment your comfort show down below i feel like i have so many and with an e number one love me some gilmore girls atypicals high up there there's so many but i want to know what yours are so let me know Next is if you are someone that has a menstrual cycle to really be aware of where you're at in your cycle. So I personally deal with something called PMDD, which is like PMS on steroids. So fun. Um, but even if you don't have PMDD, our hormone fluctuation throughout the month really have an effect on our mood, our energy, all of these things. And I have found knowing where I'm at can help me just be like, oh yeah, no wonder I'm tired. Like I'm about to get my period or no wonder I'm like unmotivated. I'm about to get my period or all of those things can be really helpful and just kind of one, creating that awareness and recognition that like, yeah, this makes sense. And also in adjusting your lifestyle. So like if I'm about to get my period, I will try to decrease the load of things on my plate, for example, because I know I tend to get more overwhelmed um, and things like that. So I recommend the app. It's called Moody. I'll put a picture here and put it in the description box. It is a really helpful way for me to track and it even tells you stuff like uh it's free by the way it really tells you stuff like hey you're on day 12 of your period you might be feeling x y and z and you can even track like your mood and things like that it's amazing so helpful highly recommend Lastly, I want to encourage you to lean on community, to not feel like you need to do all of this yourself. There's a lot of like self-help content out there and this is probably included in that. Um, we are very isolated society and there's a lot of pull yourself up by your bootstraps. There's a lot of self-healing and all these things, but we are social creatures. We are interdependent people and you do not need to do all of this on your own so phone a friend phone a therapist phone a family member join an online group go somewhere so scary i know you're like uh, i can't even shower i'm not gonna go somewhere to meet people thank you anyway pass um but yeah really try to lean on the people that you already have and build that community there a little plug if you have adhd or you think you may have adhd i run an online adhd community it's currently Certainly for women and non-binary folks, but we're working on expanding that. It is a great place to just get support, to feel validated, to be uplifted, to get advice, to get coaching, to buy 
body double when tasks are hard, all of those things called the Collective Empowerment Group. I will link it in the description box. And if you have questions, let me know. There's currently a free trial, so come hang. I'm sure I'm missing a million things. I've procrastinated making this video for months because I was like, this is a really heavy topic to cover. I'm gonna miss things, but I decided to just do my best with it and just speak from the things that have most helped me. So I hope you found it helpful. If you have additional tips, resources, questions, please comment them below. I would love to resource share and just connect more. Please like and subscribe and comment if it felt supportive for you. Thank you so much for being here with me today and for trusting me to talk to you about something so personal, so challenging, so painful, so vulnerable. Um, again, if you are feeling down, that's okay. You're not alone. And I really hope this video gave you some validation, some inspiration. And yeah, I hope if, if not anything, it was just comforting to hang out with me for a little while. I really look forward to hearing from you and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks everyone. Bye. Arrangement people saw into.